there's a lot of different things that you need to go through, but the whole goal is to be able to provide an accurate adjusted retail value. So go into it with comparables in the area, knowing what it's going to sell for. Pretty simple math that you could pretty much find anywhere on uh, what a lot of, lot of investors would say is the process or strategy on how you can you know, purchase a property. Um, usually it's somewhere between 70 to 75% of the adjusted retail value, which would be called the ARV, uh, and then minus your renovations. Um, I, I don't love um, to just stick to that because I think there's different ways to look at it with different options on the sales side. But normally if somebody was to ask us that, we would uh, want to take a look at the property. We would want to have an acquisitions agent uh, go out there, take a look at the home. He would calculate the repairs. And this is such a huge part of the process um, that I think, you know, sometimes lots of different individuals who are interested in either renovating homes, wholesaling properties, um, really doing anything with the home, even just novation process, um, which would be handling, you know, minor repairs as, as the properties on the market. Uh, but you know, there's many different ways, but the most important thing is to really understand your numbers and be able to explain them because just pulling out a rehab number out of, out of this thin air, um, is not only going to put, uh, your company at risk that you're working with, but also it can put the seller at risk to either not get a fair number, um, for you to under evaluate the renovation, um, and what it's going to cost to repair and update that home. Or you could, you know, think it is going to cost way too much. And then they're kind of stuck dealing with some of the headaches of, of getting a low ball offer because you've overestimated the, what the rehab is going to cost. Knowing this number is so important um, and being able to, you know, walk through a property and diagnose what needs done and see not just big ticket items, such as furnace, ACs, roof, windows, the, the things that could potentially cost a significant amount of money throughout the home, but also recognizing what it costs to do, you know, smaller things from interior doors to um, sockets and hinges and um, even a mailbox or, you know, if you need to pave the driveway. Just different things that as you walk around the house, you really need to focus on so that you can uh, build a true um, repair value as you look at a situation to make an offer. Um, and then to just make sure that you, once you have that number and somebody's skilled enough to have that number, um, that you've done the, the right research and that you have looked in the area over the last six months and find comparative market analysis. And, and that doesn't mean just find a house that, you know, looks similar, but, you know, really look at the area, make sure that it's, you know, the closer, the better. I always try to say, if you can find something within a mile, that's in the same school district, um, a half mile is even better. Um, but the na the same neighborhood is even way better. And, and really look at the sale values of these homes. So if you have a one bed, three bath home, um, don't compare it to a two bed, you know, one bath home or a two bath, four bath home. Uh, I mean, two bath, four bedroom home. You know, make sure that the things about the home line up. So when I say things, it's a very open word. I probably shouldn't use that word. What I'm saying is that the comparables match up between what you have run your adjusted retail value at, which means what do you think you can sell it for based on what the market is doing and what is selling in that area um, over the last six months. So that would be try to get as close as possible to square footage. Um, acreage is important. Um, how many bedrooms, how many bathrooms, stylistically what the home is. Um, but really look at the area and you know what it's selling for for per square foot if you can't find you know the exact same thing um, or understand how your 
company or what you're going to look at if you know you have a three bedroom home and the only thing close is a four bedroom home what is that bedroom worth um, and, and be able to deduct that from what you think you can sell it for so you know there's many different things if it's a if it's an odd house understand that as well um or if there's things that i would call red flags about the home understand that you're going to be dealing with you know some different issues if you have a great house and everything in that area is four bedrooms two baths that you have come across the house that has you know seven foot ceilings uh, that's an issue like you're gonna someone that walks in there that's six four um is gonna feel like they're in a you know a midget's house and um it'll feel extremely tight it won't feel as big it could be 2500 square feet and for me who's pretty short uh you know i could walk in there and really not notice seven and a seven and a half foot ceilings but for someone that's six five like that could be a big deal for them and a decision maker you know they're gonna hit their head sometimes on doorways um, because those are lower than the ceiling obviously so um there's different things about homes you know if, if you're looking at the neighborhood that it's in but you're in the first house that's on the double yellow line and it's a main road um you know those are things you need to think about and be able to come up with an understanding going into those red flag issues or things that need done in the home um, that could affect the value of the home is it in a flood zone is it like, just a bunch of different things like there could be a house in the back of the development that's at the top of the hill but the bottom development touches the creek and you know it's in a flood zone and how that affects if somebody has to carry flood insurance on one house and not on the other so there's a lot of different things that you need to go through, but the whole goal is to be able to provide an accurate adjusted retail value. So go into it with comparables in the area, knowing what it's going to sell for. So if you have a good idea by having three homes that look very similar to it, square footage, bathrooms, bedrooms, acreage, all those things, uh, and then you can match them up, it will be tremendous value uh to be able to talk and communicate with the people as as you know people that think are thinking about selling their homes have a good idea of what's going on they have a phone or the, you know the internet to get on there and take a look at what things have been selling for so they'll have a, a pretty good idea of what's going on there which is which is great and you can communicate that with them and then you can say okay now look at this house compared to that home what all needs to get done how much work needs to be done and then truly be able to provide an accurate estimate of the renovation and work that would need to be done uh, to get the property to where you need it to be um, to be able to get that value and then have that conversation and if they have questions explain this is what people are looking for this is how things are going and be able to truly break down um, the contracting side of it and the costs of those things if they have questions um, but even more importantly, if that is something that you get, that you can break that down to your team, uh, build a plan with your project man manager so that you guys are on budget and um, are efficient with understanding what needs to be done for done to the home to be able to get that thing back up on the market for the ARB that you suggested um, when you started the process. So that is how we come up with our prices You know that we offer for the home. We come up with an adjusted retail value uh, with comparable market values in the area. And then we come up with a estimate of what it's going to cost to repair. Um, there is, you know, a percentage that we need to be able to make at the end as we purchase that home. But then we add all those things together, the cost to buy and sell the home, um, our profit margin and the cost of renovations and what the adjusted retail value would be we take all those things and we uh, subtract them from the adjusted retail value so adjusted retail value versus buy and sell costs which would be any fees or things that you're going to have to do to buy and sell the home the cost of the renovation you add those together uh buy and sell costs cost of the renovation you minus them by the adjusted retail value and you can present your offer uh, to the seller and, and get a deal done and hopefully it works for both parties.